No one is exempt from storms. And I want to encourage you today to learn from your storms. God is teaching you something about Himself, something about you and something about the storms of life. We are talking about storm theology. Every single one of us in life experiences and encounters storms. Some of these storms are physical, some are emotional, some are economic, some are relational, but there is no doubt that we all experience storms in life. And I'm loving this because we're discovering that no matter how great the winds and the waves and the magnitude of the storm is that is against us, we have a God that is with us within the storm. You and I do not need to fear the storms of life because greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. Now we're looking at the text from Mark chapter 4 verses 35 to 41. Let me read that to us again. It says, on that day when evening had come, He told them, let's cross over to the other side of the sea. So they left the crowd and took Him along since He was in the boat and other boats were with Him. A great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking over the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. He was in the stern, sleeping on the cushion. So they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to die? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Silence, be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Then he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked one another, who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. I love this text. And especially I love it because it tells us that Jesus was asleep on a cushion. I love the detail in the scripture. You know what? Comfort did matter to Jesus. He had a cushion right there for his head. Now we know that the storm's happening. We know that most of the disciples are fishermen. And so when fishermen are freaking out and fishermen themselves actually think that the storm's going to take them out, that they're going to die, you know that this is like a you know, a category five hurricane kind of storm. This is not just like a little, oh, I'm seasick. There's a, the waves are a bit rocky or there's a little bit of wind. When fishermen, this is what they do for a living. When they themselves think this one is so bad, it's going to take us out. You ever had a storm that you thought was so bad? It is going to take you out. Now, the very fact that you're watching this broadcast today that tells me that you have survived 100% of every storm that has come to take you out in your life. You know, I have to remind myself so often when I think, oh, wow, this attack, this storm, this challenge is so great in my life. I'm sure it's going to take me out. I have to stop and say, well, Chris, you're still here. The enemy has sent many assignments against you. He has sent many storms into your life to take you out. And guess what? The fact that I'm still on the earth means I have, like you, survived 100% of the storms by the grace of God. And because Jesus has always been in the boat, whether we recognize him or not. You know, the interesting thing is in the text that we're reading about, the miracle is that where Jesus, he calmed the wind and he calmed the waves. And by doing this, what he did was he actually demonstrated his divine power to his disciples. What he was showing them was he was giving them more evidence that he truly was the son of God. Do you think, Chris, did they need to know? Yes, they did need to know. This is God incarnate and he is doing signs and wonders and miracles. But all of a sudden, he's doing something that only God could do. He is calming the wind and the waves. The disciples in this text were literally gobsmacked when they saw Jesus do this. You know, we read in verse 41, and they were terrified and asked one another, who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. Now, I wonder if in this moment, they realized that they were in the presence of God himself. You see, up to this point, the disciples knew that Jesus was special and they knew that Jesus was unique and that God was obviously working through him. But 
This event, this started a very significant paradigm shift in their thinking about who Jesus really is. See, prophets of the past, they'd performed various miracles like, like healing the sick, cleansing lepers, and even dividing the Red Sea. Remember, Moses saw the Red Sea part. But this, this was something completely different. This is the type of power that was reserved for God alone. You know, I want you to look at Psalm 89, verse 8 to 9. The scripture says, Lord God of armies, who is strong like you, Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging sea. So the psalmist is saying, God, this is what you do. You rule the raging sea. And in this text, we see that Jesus just ruled the raging sea. Uh, Psalm 104, verse five to nine, it says, He established the earth on its foundations. It will never be shaken. You covered it with the deep sea as if it were a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, they hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the place you established for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. They will never cover the earth again. So the fact is only God had this kind of power. And Jesus in this moment is revealing to the disciples, I am more than just a good teacher. I am actually God incarnate. I have power that only God has to calm the seas, to speak to the elements, and they would actually listen. This is a God power. You know, the next storm that we're going to look at, it happened just two chapters later in Mark's gospel. So I need to tell you all, traveling with Jesus, it was obviously never safe or boring. The disciples seemed to go literally from storm to storm. So if you feel like, hey, I'm a Jesus follower and it feels like I'm, in, I'm, I'm encountering so many storms in my life, I want you to know, welcome to the family. In Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 52, we read, Immediately He made His disciples get into the boat and go ahead of Him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while He dismissed the crowd. After He said goodbye to them, He went away to the mountain to pray well into the night. The boat was in the middle of the sea and he was alone on the land. He saw them straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Very early in the morning, he came toward them walking on the sea and wanted to pass by them. When they saw him walking on the sea, they thought he was a ghost and cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke with them and said, have courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them and the wind ceased. They were completely astounded because they had not understood about the loaves. Instead, their hearts were hardened. You know, this story, it starts right after Jesus had just finished feeding around 20,000 people with a little boy's lunch consisting of five bread rolls and a couple of pieces of fish. Now, the scripture tells us that it was 5,000 men that were counted that day. A lot of you are going, Christine, it was 5,000. But scholars say that if you included women and children, which I like to do, I am a woman and I was a child, that they estimate that there would have been at least 20,000 people up on that hill. Now imagine feeding 20,000 people with five bread rolls and two pieces of fish. I would imagine the disciples would have been on a spiritual high. Can you imagine that they would have seen this miracle taking place before their very own eyes? I mean, they were touching the miracle. They were distributing the food to the people. I mean, Jesus just kept breaking the bread and he kept breaking the fish and he kept giving it out to the disciples and they kept giving it to the people. I would have been on a high going, I'm touching the miracle that Jesus is doing. I'm distributing the miracle that Jesus is doing. And then when it was all done, they gathered up 12 baskets full of bread and fish because they were going to take this on the boat with them when Jesus sent them across the sea to Bethsaida. So Jesus was not getting in the boat with them this time, like he did in the last storm we talked about in chapter four. 
what was happening was Jesus was sending on the boat with them the evidence of the miracle that he had just performed on the mountain. In the 12 basketfuls of leftovers, it was fish, it was bread. He was saying, as you get onto this boat, I want you to remember that I just did a miracle. I just want you to remember what you just saw. It was impossible. It was supernatural. I miraculously provided for the people. Take the evidence of that miracle with you into the boat because you're going over to Bethsaida. What they didn't know was they were about to go into a storm. You know, when we read in verse 47 that late that night, the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake and Jesus was alone on land. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. So this trip, it was only supposed to take about an hour, but the disciples were obviously in a fierce storm because they were in serious trouble. They were rowing literally for their lives. Now, can you imagine how quickly their faith just turned into fear? They had just witnessed an incredible miracle on the mountain. But now in the middle of the lake, as they are straining against the wind and the waves, they're wondering where Jesus had gone. I wonder if you've ever been there. One minute, you felt so close to God. God came through for you and God came through for you in a miraculous way. God provided for you. I mean, you are seeing God in your quiet time. You are sensing the presence of God all day, every day. You're on a spiritual high. And then within hours, something unexpected hits and you're wondering, has God abandoned me? Does God even know I'm alive? Does God even care about my circumstance? I know I've been there. I know that I've gone from the ultimate spiritual high and just within hours going, God, do you even know who I am? You know what's noteworthy is that we read that Jesus saw they were in serious trouble. This is what I want you to know today. I want you to know that wherever you are, that whatever you're going through, that Jesus sees, Jesus knows and Jesus cares. There's no doubt that the storms of life can cause us to not recognise Jesus, even when He's coming to us in the midst of a storm. Now, Jesus walking on water, that, that was another miracle. Jesus was demonstrating His power over nature here, just like He had by calming the wind and the waves in chapter four. He was showing the disciples that He really was God by walking on water. In the Old Testament, only God walked on water and had power over the sea. In Job 9.8, it says that He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. So by doing this miracle, Jesus was demonstrating once again that He is God in the flesh. Jesus said three important things to the disciples as He approached them in the middle of this fierce storm. He said, have courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. In the middle of the wind and the waves, Jesus was reminding them that they were not out of His reach. He was in control. They could depend on Him. He would come through for them. He had power over the storm even when they couldn't recognise Him in the storm. I wonder who might need to hear these three phrases today. Perhaps you're facing an internal emotional storm, maybe a mental storm, a relational storm, a financial storm, a physical storm. I want you to hear these words of courage today. This is what Jesus said. He said, have courage. It is I, don't be afraid. You never need to fear the storm because greater is He that is with you in the storm than the storm that is surrounding you. Let's make a decision that we're gonna fix our eyes on Jesus. He is good, He does good, and He will work all things together for your good and for His glory in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments and if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.